Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. My name is Cicada and I'll be taking you through today's match. Before starting, we at Split Second want to thank everyone for your constant support and suggestions on all social media. You can continue to support us by either sharing or liking this video, subscribing if you haven't yet, or by becoming a patron. Since we're back to self-quarantine, we got a cool thing we want to share with you at the end of this video. This week, we invited a friend from our LGS, João Monteiro, who is playing Isan. Brandão is playing a land-themed Yarok deck, David is playing his Narset turns list, and Bald is playing Ajimuth's Beltered Golos. Monteiro won the roll, and he was forced to mulligan down to 5. He kept two lands in Snow Forest and Verdant Catacombs, with a versatile worldly tutor ready to get him whatever he requires. Nature's Claim can help him get rid of stacks or dangerous cards. He also kept Sakura Tribe Scout. He sent Carpet of Flowers and Quirion Ranger to the bottom of his library. Brandon Mulligan down a 6 and kept 3 lands in Windswept Heath, Breeding Pool, and Prismatic Vista. He has one song to interact, Demonic Tutor as a way to get him whatever card suits his needs, and a Dread Presence to abuse his commander's triggers. Cloud of Fairies was sent to the bottom of his library. David got his free mulligan keeping 4 lands in Arid Mesa, Plains, Volcanic Island, and Sea of Clouds. He has some ramp with Green Monolith, allowing for a turn 3 Narset. Finally, Pact of Negation can help him protect Narset or even his Walk the Aeons to really get things going. Ball has Shattered Skull Smashing as his land. From there, he can very quickly ramp towards most of his hand, namely Mana Vault and Green Monolith, and Cloud Key with Chromatic Star to Cantrip. Energy Tap is also a decent way to get Golos to work, while Noxious Revival can function as either Disruption or a way to recover something like the Chromatic Star. All of this might just be enough for a turn 2 or turn 3 Goblin Char Belcher. Let's go! Monteiro starts off with a Snow Forest and a Sakura Tribe Scout, threatening a turn 2 Yisun as expected from his deck. Brandon plays a Tap Breeding Pool, taking it slowly despite Swan Song. David plays an Arid Mesa and simply passes. Bal plays an untapped Shadow Skull, the Hammer Pass. He gets him to a power turn because he just drew Soul Ring. So, he starts off with Mana Vault, followed by Cloud Key choosing Artifact. He plays Soul Ring for free and follows it with Grim Monolith. He plays Chromatic Star also for free. The table watches as Bal gets Golos out on turn 1, fetching for an Inventor's Fair. Paul does a quick vibe check, noticing the table is pretty intimidated by that first turn. Monteiro plays a Verdant Catacombs and passes. Not having put a land into play, the table guesses he might have none at the ready. Brandon plays a Prismatic Vista and cracks it for a Basic Swamp. He plays a Demonic Tutor for a Mana Crypt. On his end step, David cracks Arid Mesa for a tap to Sacred Foundry, just chilling. David plays a Sea of Clouds and then casts Grim Monolith more fast mana. On his end step, Monteiro casts Nature's Claim on Baal's Sol Ring. Baal gains 4 life and is sent somewhat behind as most of his mana is tapped. Baal gets the first ping from Mana Vault after gaining life from Inventor's Fair. He had a chance to go for Belcher, but he knows an incoming oof is imminent, so he attacks Monteiro and he takes it, saying he still has a lot of life to go. Baal then plays a tapped Balagat Sanctuary. Zendika Rising really pushing the landless plan. Monteiro uses Baal's end step to crack the catacombs for a snow forest and cast a worldly tutor, searching for, you guessed it, a collector oof. He is not having none of that ramp from his opposition. Our guest plays collector oof, intent on sending David and Baal a few turns back. In response, Baal cracks the star for blue, but otherwise the spell resolves. Brandon plays a Zagoth Triome and passes, sad about his tutor choices. David plays a tap Steam Vents, since his turn 3 Narset plan was foiled. Baal's Fair and Mana Vault cancel each other again, before he plays a tap Tangle Veil and casts a Lotus Blossom. He then attacks Monteiro with Golos, pressing his life total. Luck seems to be on Monteiro's side, as he plays a Snow Forest fresh from the top of his library. This allows him to cast Yisun uncontested. He passes. Brandon plays an untapped Watery Grave and plays a Dread Presence. Monteiro isn't too thrilled about this creature, which can single-handedly kill some of Isan's toolbox creatures. David plays a Windswept Heath and once again passes, pointing at the youth. 
Bob puts a counter on Lotus Blossom, gains one from the fair, and decides to untap Mana Vault and spare himself some pings. He attacks Monteiro with Colos for the third time. Monteiro keeps himself steady. Monteiro passes without doing anything, which, granted, is a Yisan thing. Brandon plays a Windswept Heath and moves to end step, content in not doing the first move versus Monteiro. During his end step, David fetches for a tapped Hallowed Fountain. David plays the planes and casts a personal tutor. He searches for a temporal mastery and passes, steadily preparing his game plan. Bob puts a counter on Lotus Blossom, gains one from the fair, and attacks Monteiro with Golos yet again. Before blocks, Monteiro activates Yisan and searches for a Quirion Ranger. He takes the damage. On Bal's end step, Monteiro activates Quirion Ranger, returning a forest to his hand and untapping Yisan. With the untap on the stack, Brandon cracks his fetch to get a Bayou. Since it is a swamp, Dread Presence deals 2 damage to Quirion Ranger, taking it out of the table. Then Monteiro activates Sakura Tribe Scout to put a forest before getting to his turn. Monteiro decides he can also deal some damage as he attacks Bal with the Oof. Bal takes the damage and Monteiro passes. Brandon uses his turn to cast his commander. This will allow future swamps to be much more useful against the table. David miraculously casts Temporal Mastery. He plays Volcanic Island and goes to his extra turn, which he uses to cast Narset before passing. Was the Mastery too mana to draw one, or did he have something else in mind? Bal puts a counter on Lotus Blossom, gains one from the fair, and attacks Montero with Golos one more time, getting some dangerous commander damage in, while looking to clear the board of that oof. In response, Montero activates Isan to get a scavenging ooze, but otherwise takes the damage. Bal then plays an ever-flowing chalice with two counters. On his end step, Brandon plays a noxious revival, putting Demonic Tutor on top of his library. Montero does a Yisan thing as he plays a forest and passes. Brandon untaps and plays Demonic Tutor. He gets and plays Cloud of Fairies, which triggers twice thanks to Yarok, making it basically a ritual as it untaps two lands twice. Brandon then plays a Shrieking Drake, which, when it enters, forces Luis to return two creatures to his hand. He returns the Drake and the Fairies. As you can imagine, this creates a loop where Luis can cast the fairies to untap two lands twice, and the drake to return both fairies and drake to his hand, while generating one extra colored mana with each iteration. Luis gains infinite Sultai colored mana and casts Natural Order, sacrificing Yarok. David tries to counter it with Pact of Negation, but Brandon has a Swan Song at the ready. Natural Order resolves and Brandon gets a Reason Reef, which triggers on ETB, drawing him 1. He then plays Yarok, and the table starts to wonder if this is going to be another fun yet convoluted combo. Reef triggers twice because of Yarok, drawing him 2 more. Brandon then plays Shrieking Drake. Drake enters and he returns the Drake and the Reason Reef to hand, which means he gets to see his entire library putting all lands in play. Now, you must be wondering where this is going. Well, eventually Luigi hits an Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth and plays an Ashaya. What this does is, Ashaya turns all of Luigi's creatures into forests, and Urborg turns all his forest creatures into swamps as well. And yep, you guessed it, Luigi can now loop the drake and any other creature to generate an infinite amount of pings from Dread Presence, killing the table. This match was really fun, but it didn't showcase what all the decks can do. Since the game was short, the group decided to shuffle up and give it another try. Time to check the starting hands. Bal is the one starting. He has no lands as expected, but still got a playable hand. Lotus Petal can chain into either Lanor Elves or Deathrite Shaman. He can go for Carpet of Flowers whenever the islands start to come out. He has Cold Mirror or Renowned Weaponsmith to further ramp him. Ornithopter is mostly filler with this hand, but it's all enough for an early Golos into Inventor's Fair. Monteiro is second and he mulligan once. He kept two lands, a forest and Gaius Cradle, with Elvish Mystic up and ready to push to turn two Isan. He has interaction in both Nature's Claim and Lignify, covering enchantment, artifact and creature. Eternal Witness is top tier recursion, Craterruth Behemoth is a finisher. Brandon mulligan twice but his hand is pretty robust, with Prismatic Vista, Bayou and an Island. He has two tutors in Worldly Tutor and Finale of Devastation, which could easily give him the win like in the previous game. 
Finally, Sol Ring is gonna get him ahead early on. Arboreal Grazer was kicked to the bottom of his library. Finally, we have David with only one mulligan. He has Secret Foundry, Plains, and a Flooded Strand, plus Sol Ring and Izzet Signet to push for a turn 3 Narset. Nothing to laugh at. Fierce Guardianship can protect his turn 3 commander as well, or stop someone else from hitting his game plan. Enter the Infinite is meant to be cheated in by Narset, so David might be looking for ways to get it back into his library. This game is looking like fire, let's check it out. Bal starts off with a Lotus Petal and cracks it to play a Lanor Elves while hoping he doesn't eat a misstep. The spell resolves and he plays an Ornithopter, which is there mostly for sacrificial rituals. He then passes, skipping a land drop and looking sturdier against Artifact Hate this time around. Monteiro plays a Snow Forest and casts Elvish Mystic, ready to Isan next turn. Brandon plays a Bayou and a Sol Ring, ramping up as well. Finally, David plays a Plains, a Sol Ring and an EZ Signet, pretty much announcing Narset could be just a couple of turns away. Bal plays a Deathrite Shaman with the Lanor Elves, still having no lands to drop. It also sucks that the rest of the table has yet to crack a fetch. Monteiro plays a Chaos Cradle and then his Hisan hits the battlefield, ready for some sick tunes. Brandon plays a Prismatic Vista and cracks it for a forest. Ball breathes easier. Brandon then plays Finale of Devastation for 2 to get himself a Bloom Tender and push his speed. David plays a Tap Secret Foundry, eyes on the table with the rest of his mana untapped. Ball plays a recently drawn Finhorn Helds and passes. His deck is living up to the Landless Fantasy, although he keeps managing to dish out dorks as if they were land drops. Monteiro casts Nature's Claim on Brandon's Soul Ring, destroying it and giving him 4 life, since Brandon was getting too comfortable. Then, Monteiro plays a Chrome Mox, exiling Lignify. He uses it to play Eternal Witness to get back Nature's Claim, which is aimed straight at David's Soul Ring. To his surprise, David counters it with Fierce Guardianship. Monteiro attacks David with Isan, not happy about the outcome. Brandon casts a Worldly Tutor on his upkeep to get a Gilda Drake. He plays an island and then plays Gilda Drake to steal Monteiro's Isan. After all, he has some nice toolboxy creatures he can get himself. He passes pretty happy with his progress. David plays a Flooded Strand and cracks it for a Volcanic Island. This allows him to cast Narset before passing. The table is pretty concerned with this commander, and rightfully so. Bal plays a Carpet of Flowers and moves to his second main phase, during which he has Red with the enchantment to cast Desperate Ritual. This allows him to play an Everflowing Chalice for 2 and cast a Gold Mirror, finally managing to ramp. He passes. Monteiro plays a Snow Forest and casts a Shaya and then taps his Creature Forest to play a Karametra's Acolyte. He could still make it without Isan. Brandon plays and cracks a Polluted Delta for an Underground Sea. He plays a Demonic Tutor for a Mana Breach and casts it, looking to disrupt the table and David in particular. David exiles and enter the Infinite to cast Force of Will on the Mana Breach, not at all interested in getting his turn screwed with. On his turn, David plays a Personal Tutor and puts a Time Stretch on top. The table opens the Social Stack to let out a hearty Oh Boy. David then plays a Mystic Remora before he attacks Baal with Narset, since he can't kill her during combat. Narset triggers revealing the Time Stretch, a Time Warp, a Sensei's Divining Top, and a Command Beacon. Baal takes the damage and David moves to casting the top, Time Stretch, and Time Warp. We're in for the long run now. David pays for the Remora and then plays an Island. He casts a Walk the Eons to go for another extra turn. He attacks Baal with Narset yet again and with the trigger reveals a Scroll Rack, a Temporal Manipulation, a Lion's Eye Diamond, and a Plateau. Baal blocks with Thopter. David casts the Temporal Manipulation, Scroll Rack, and LED. He now has 4 extra turns waiting for him. The fish is looking at David as he pays to keep it around. He plays a Tundra and attacks Baal with Narset for the third time, revealing Time Twister, Reflecting Pool, Windswept Heath, and Waves of Aggression. Baal takes the damage and David casts Waves of Aggression. Time Twister, on the other hand, stays in Hexile. David is gifting people with the possibility of watching him play. He doesn't need to give them new hands as well. On his extra attack step, he mercilessly attacks the landless player once more. He gets the worst possible trigger as he reveals 4 lands. 3 turns to go. 
The remora still gets to be kept around as David pays for it. He then plays a Teferi Master of Time and, you guessed it, a Dex Ball. With the trigger, he reveals Mox Diamond, Enlightened Tutor, Arcane Signet and Force of Negation. Is this another whiff? Ball blocks with the Gold Mirror, losing more mana but attempting to keep himself around. David casts Arcane Signet. Mox Diamond is sacrificed to its own trigger. David upticks Teferi, forgetting to activate Sensei's Divining Top first, thus drawing and discarding a Cyclonic Rift. He casts Enlighted Tutor, searching for a Shark Typhoon, just for giggles, to try and end everyone's suffering. He still has two extra turns. David doesn't pay for the Remora, seeing as he has bigger fish to put on the stack. He casts Shark Typhoon and switches targets as he attacks Brandown. Narset reveals Marsh Flats, Steam Vents, Cataclysm, Temporal Trespass. The table considers conceding but decides against it. David casts Cataclysm, putting a 4 4 flying shark on the battlefield and keeping Narset, Arcane Signet, Volcanic Island, and Shark Typhoon. Ball keeps the carpet, Deathrite Shaman, and Everflowing Chalice. Montero keeps Ashaya, Chrome Mox, and Gaius Cradle. Brandon keeps Bayou and Montero's Isan. Brave Bunch. David then casts Temporal Trespass, gaining a turn and an 11 11 flying shark. Still two turns to go, and things are not looking great. David attacks Brandon with Narset and Montero with the shark. The trigger reveals an Arid Mesa, Lethal Form Engine, Prismatic Vista, and a Narset Partner Avails. No one blocks, so David casts Lethal Form Engine and the other Narset, getting a 4 4 and a 3 3 flying shark tokens. He still wants the card in hand, so he passes to himself without activating Teferi. One extra turn to go. After drawing, David upticks Teferi. He then swings with his Narset at Baal. The 11-11 and the 4-4 go at Monteiro and the 3-3 goes at Brandon. Narset triggers and David activates the Lethal Form engine to copy the trigger. Fun times. The first trigger reveals a Chain of Vapor, a Swan Song, a Chrome Mox and a Sea of Clouds. The next trigger reveals an island, a Mox Opal, planes and a Command Tower. No more extra turns and no blocks either. David plays Mox Opal, creating a poor old 0 0 shark. Rest in peace. David then casts Chain of Vapor, creating a 1 1 shark, and counters it with Swan Song, creating another 1 1 shark and a 2 2 bird. He passes. The Doom Clock is pretty much ready to explode. Ball adds black with carpet. He plays Talisman of Curiosity. He then casts Hogger Mauling on the 11 11 shark, looking to give the table another round. On his end step, David casts Source of Plowshares on a Shaya and gets himself a 1 1 shark. Monteiro all but lost hope. Still, he uses his turn to cast Burgeoning before passing. Bernal plays Mana Crypt and also passes. Is this the end? David upticks Teferi. He attacks Brandon with all creatures. Narset triggers and David copies the trigger with Lethal Form Engine. He reveals Nexus of Fate, Long-Term Plans, Smothering Tithe, and Beacon of Tomorrows. His next trigger reveals Crystal Vein, Wear Tear, Path to Exile, and Armageddon. Making the math, the table realizes there is no way they're going to make it. And so, they concede. Thank you for joining us for today's matches, everyone. Today, the victory goes to the crazy newer loops with Brandon's Yarok and the traditional taking turns Narset from David. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons and especially Izanagi, Stefan, TJ Rapp, Mike Purr, Ajimo, Eagle Eagle, Heated Chill, Drunken Housecat, and LL Cool Rat, our stack breakers. As we've said at the start of the video, we have a cool announcement. On the first week of every month, our announcements channel on Discord will tag everyone to sign up for a raffle. We will have a raffle for patrons and non-patrons each month and the winners of each category will be able to play a game with us in Cockatrice to be featured on the channel. If you want to go through other Commander Adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other easy age related matters, join us on Discord. Come with us again for a new set of Commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then.